Ladies and gentlemen, let's damn go. I'll tell you what, I was just talking to the boys and I was saying, you know what? I feel that I've been the busiest I have been during these draft weeks. For the past couple of weeks leading up to the draft, I almost feel mid-season form as mm. far as how busy I am between live streams, my personal brand, BetUS TV, Roundtable. It's just all draft, 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 but I'm loving every single second of it. It's beautiful. I'm going to miss these days when the dead period comes around about mid-June. TD, how you doing today, man? I'm doing great. Um, I'm just excited for the draft to come. I mean, here we are. We're literally one week away. We're gonna draft day is seven days away, and we're gonna be, man. I'm just, I'm just ready for it to go down, man. It's a part of our future and the teams that we love, man. Who gets better? Who gets worse? Man, it's about to go down. I'm excited to be in the huddle today. Y'all hit that like button. Let your friends and family members know about the huddle as well. Thank you all for tuning in. Richie Malura. How you doing, man? I was watching the Jets roundtable a little bit earlier today. I saw you guys finessing a mock draft. <laughs> we did finesse a mock draft, baby. Yes, yeah. we did. One week away until the New York Jets get even better because it's impossible to get worse. Why? Because there's not holes to fill, like on the Miami Dolphins roster, for example. So I'm really excited about it, man. Seven days from now, we'll be talking about actually what's happening i will admit i am sick of mock drafts okay i'm Me ready too, for the real dude. deal i'm sick of like predicting this this guy's a sleeper blah 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 okay let's talk about let's recap what happened in the draft and that's gonna happen soon and i cannot wait to preview it a week from today on the draft day and then the day after recap it all and then see what happens in day two and day three because that's where the real fun begins i'm feeling every second of it man you know just a week away Folks, as you're coming in, please do us a favor. Smash that like button. And say that you're new here, have no fear. Myself, Richie, and TD are live on BetUS TV Monday through Friday at 3 p.m. EST. Weekly, daily, during business hours, baby. Go on ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We just recently surpassed 6,000 subscribers. I think that we can get up to damn 10,000 before the regular season. Absolutely. So if you haven't done it, Go on ahead and make it happen. Folks, as in Richie and TD, I'll tell you what, man. There has been quite a bit of news that has been dropping for the past couple of days based off of what particular teams are planning on doing with their coveted picks. Whether or not that they're in the business of trading up, whether or not that they're in the business of trading down, staying put. And most notably, first key story that I ended up finding here today the Washington Commanders, and so obviously under new ownership, obviously under a new realm, they ended up saying that they are not walking away from pick number two. Mm. They're sitting there. They're there. They said that they're very close to determining who their quarterback or what player they're going to select at number two overall. So I do sort of want to get y'all's thoughts because we've been going through a lot of mock drafts. And I'll tell you what, that second overall pick changes. I've seen Drake May. I've seen Jaden Daniels. I've seen J.J. McCarthy there sometimes. So if you were the GM of Washington or if you had an eye's view of what's going on in their mind, what do you think they're doing with that second pick? Who's the quarterback that you think, if you had to put money down, is going to be their guy? I'm going to talk to Richie first. Richie, what do you got for me? <clears throat> um... Well, I'll start off with looking at the odds on BetUS. The heavy, heavy favorite on BetUS's site is Jaden Daniels at minus 400. Mm. And is it like shock? Is it like news that they're not trading the second overall pick? Because I never really thought that was even a possibility. Like, I always felt like they were going to stay put unless there was a team that just gave them the house or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, this GM basically put all shots off that it's not for sale whatsoever, regardless of what the package is. So Jaden Daniels is the favorite, which is interesting. You know, like fat, like rewind a little bit to <clears throat> the end of the NFL um, season, end of college season. It felt like it was Caleb Williams and Drake May one and two, and then all of a sudden Jaden Daniels started really soaring up, my, uh, up the uh, boards, and then JJ McCarthy started soaring up the boards. So like we have these two quarterbacks that are really elevating, and it seems like you know, Pet US really loves it. The fact that it's at minus 400 and then Drake May's at plus 250 and then J.J. McCarthy's at plus 900, 
I find those odds extremely interesting, which is definitely where I'm going to lean towards them taking uh, Jaden Daniels. Now, could they take Drake May still? Absolutely. I think that's still on the table. I think I saw a report that they were actually thinking about J.J. McCarthy at number two. I don't see that happening. I think J.J. is going to go high, but I don't think he's going to go number two. So what do you got, T.D.? Uh, this is going to be interesting because no one really knows what the um, commanders want to do. See, we all sit here and tell each other who we think the number two quarterback is behind Kayla Williams. We all have these discussions, but they might like Drake May more than Jaden Daniels. Mm-hmm. They might like Jaden Daniels more than Drake May. They all might like Michael Penix. They might love J.J. McCarthy. They, uh, that Washington is the team that brought in all those quarterbacks, right? So with that being said, they have a decision that they have to make. And here's the perfect, here's the issue that a lot of people don't consider. How many times do we look at the second, third, fourth, and fifth best quarterback in the draft and the fourth or fifth one ends up being the best one in the whole draft? The third one ends up being the best one in the whole draft. You, you see what I'm saying? So are you going to take um, Tua and Herbert or are you going to take Jordan Love? You see, but so you don't know what the team is thinking, who they like the most, who they feel fits with their offensive coordinator and what they're trying to do and what they're trying to build. What type of scheme do they want to run? Do they want to be run heavy? Are they going, you know, a zone run game? Are they trying to play action this? Are they trying to spread it? You don't know what their plan is. They already have a coaching staff in play. What does that coaching staff specialize in? But I say all of that to say Jaden Daniels has to be the pick here. Um, Mm -hmm. But you could be shocked and say, wow, they went Penix. Wow, they went Drake May. But Jaden Daniels has to be the pick here, I believe. Uh, Second best prospect on the board. But like I said yesterday, this class is interesting because there's a lot of good prospects, whether they bust out or not. They're still good prospects. See, I'll tell you what, man. I feel like out of all the mock drafts we've been seeing, it's been in this order. It's been Caleb, Jaden Daniels, Drake May off of the top. I really think, I really think, and this doesn't like have anything to do with a player comparison, but it has everything to do with the last minute hype that we have been getting from this one particular quarterback. And that's JJ McCarthy. Mm. I'm Mm. willing right now, as far as like a hot take for like quarterbacks going like in order, I don't want to say that he's going to go like that, like he's going to be the second quarterback taken, but I will almost guarantee based off of all the hate for Drake may and all of the last-minute love for J.J. McCarthy, I think J.J. McCarthy goes above Drake May. Mm. What do y'all think about that? I'm not particularly (sighs) sure, man. I mean, listen, with J.J., he's already met with Washington. Um, I don't know. I don't See, know, that's, and that's my point about Washington. I think it might be Nobody it. knows who they love. We all speculate because Jaden Daniels is the second um, highest ranked prospect. So we just automatically, he's number two. But Washington brought all five of those guys in. And we don't know who they love. You know, yeah. and they're still saying, you know, we're deciding on which one. They obviously are going quarterback. But who do they love? And they're not going to say anything. They're not going to tilt their hat because another thing that everybody, no one's talking to talking about, we can make the automatic assumption that Caleb's the number one, you know, um, which is a good assumption, but man, you never know. I mean, we're just on I think a lot of the narrative, we all just make automatics. We make automatics that Marvin Harrison Jr. is the first court, um, wide receiver off the board. We make automatics that Caleb's the first um, quarterback off the board because a lot of it starts with the draft ranking and we automatically place a guy. And then after the combine, we kind of put somebody solidify them in a spot, but we don't know who these teams really love. And we haven't heard them say anything. It's all speculation. Mm. And see, it's funny too, because the team below Washington, the new England Patriots, Their GM said today, this is verbatim, Mm -hmm. he said that the third overall pick, as far as on the market, quote-unquote, they are open 
for business. Meaning that the New England Patriots have confirmed that if they get a sweet enough deal, that they are now willing to trade down. Instant thoughts, TD. Uh, first off, um, they also said if they don't trade down, they feel good about selecting a quarterback at that spot. So mm -hmm. it's a trade down or quarterback, which leaves you, who do they love? Okay, how much do they love them? And if someone wants to trade down with them, how much are they giving us to get off of who we love? Or is who we love not there because the commanders took who we love? You know, um, that's what it all comes down to. So, of course, they want to keep their options open. But here's what that tells me. That tells me New England does have someone that they do love. But their nervous is, as many people, they have no idea what Washington is going to do. And Washington could very well scoop up who they love. A lot of people say Jaden Daniels to New England. Well, if he goes number two, have we heard that New England is interested in Drake May? Does New England love Drake May? You know, so we don't know. But here's what I would tell you. They put themselves out there to be open for business today, like officially official. We already heard rumors, but now it's officially official. The Vikings have already made a call. They already know what the package is. Two other teams potentially already made a call, like the Raiders, like the Saints. You know, these teams have made calls just to find out what the cost is. They also may already have an offer, and they're sitting on it because they don't have to pull a trigger on an offer until maybe draft night or the day before or something like that. And also, if any team wants to involve a player, we're going to not hamper on this because Richie's going to blow a gasket, but say, hypothetically, the Cowboys or the Chargers do want to move up and move their quarterback. That has to be done before the draft. Not the not the Chargers, but like a team like the Cowboys because of the no trade clause has to be verified, all of that stuff before you can um, potentially make any type of move like that. So they're hearing the offers now. They're getting all the information now. Teams are calling to see how much it'll take. But a lot of this is going to happen last minute, if not on draft night, depending on who goes one and two. Um, so the Patriots have no rush. I think they do potentially trade out of the spot. I actually think that they may actually trade out of the spot. I really think the Patriots would consider a veteran quarterback for a year. Jacoby Brissett, it, Ryan Tannehill, and if they have to, because um, a good friend of ours, Kobe, made a good point um, last night when he said, you don't just draft the quarterback because you need to if the guy you like isn't there. And exactly. that's where that's where a lot of teams get caught up. The guy I wanted went at number two, but here I am at number three. These guys are solid, but it's not the guy I like. But I yeah. got to take a quarterback. You don't do that. You don't so, do that just because. So hey, I see them trading out potentially if they don't get the guy. Now, listen, I have been pounding the table. And honestly, I could care less about what the Patriots do. But I'm trying to look at this through an objective lens. Their best option right now is, is to draft Marvin Harrison Jr. at three. Draft Marvin Harrison Jr. at three. Michael Penix is going to be there during your second round pick. He's going to be there. Mm -hmm. draft That's not you guaranteed. You have Brissett, and so you have Jacoby Brissett, who is a credible starter, right? I mean, he did a wonderful job over in Cleveland when he was asked to take over for when Deshaun Watson ended up getting hurt. Get Penix in the second. Say, for example, he like you're getting red flags, red flags, red flags, and go on ahead and test out free agency next year with I'll Dak do. Prescott or somebody else. I think that, like, like hell, like, would you trust? And this is an objective question, and then so we'll get Richie's take, and then hopefully an answer right to this question. Would you rather have a Drake May with all of the weapons that are currently on the New England Patriots today, or would you rather have Michael Penix with Marvin Harrison Jr.? That's my question, Richie. Well, okay. You can go, TD. Well, real quick, Richie said that's not guaranteed. And I second, third, fourth, fifth that. And here's yeah. why, Dan. If you draft Marvin Harrison Jr. at number three, you just shook up the whole draft. Yep. The whole first round. You know why? Yep. If you draft um, 
Marvin Harrison Jr. at three, all those quarterbacks might go in the first round. Here's why. The Saints, the Raiders, they may literally be hoping Michael Penix is there in the second round. If the Patriots skip out and go wide receiver early, yeah. now the Patriots are ahead of them in the second round, and now their priority in the second round is to move up back into the first round ahead of the Patriots' early second round pick. Now yeah. now, what, now, um, the Raiders and the Saints, they're potentially taking their second round pick and a few other assets and trying to move into 28, 29, yeah. 30 ahead of the Patriots. And that's where everything yeah. – now you're making quarterbacks go – even yeah. earlier by throwing that yeah. that um that in the mix. So no, I don't see I don't see that. So I'll tell you what too though, like with like a blue chip receiver like Marvin Harrison Jr., a receiver like that is going to make I would say the top ten QB prospects in this draft look good. Like I yeah. would choose Spencer Rattler paired with Marvin Harrison Jr. over a Drake May <laughs> who has absolutely nothing. Yeah, I like would Drake choose May. Spencer Rattler with Marvin <laughs> Harrison Jr over a Penix too like I think this needs to be their move Richie talk to us yeah I I mean TD basically took what I said and took everything I was going to say but it's okay no I gave you the floor I gave you the floor it's all good we're aligned baby it's all that matters if you are the Patriots and your goal is to draft Marvin Harrison and then Penix in the second round you cannot wait in the second round for Penix you have to trade back up in the first round for him like I just don't agree at all that teams go with the idea like, oh, let's hope that our guy like what happens then if you draft Marvin Harrison and then you try to get Penix in the second round and you don't trade up and you're on the clock and he's not there. Then what? Then you're going to go with Spencer Rattler. Then you go with Spencer Rattler. You go with Jordan Travis. No, but now you can't just start throwing quarterbacks um, that they. Yeah, I love those prospects, though. Like that doesn't really move move for me like I feel like if you're the Patriots you want to get your franchise quarterback that you want you don't want to just like trade down and hope your guy's there and then if he's not there just go with the next best like you got to love these guys it's like you got to do the the work and like the pre-draft process like I don't know I don't feel like that would be a smart decision in my opinion if you're an organization you know hoping that your guy falls to you and be aggressive and get your guys there's reasons why all these quarterbacks in the draft teams trade up for them because they love them and they want them so bad that they're willing to risk it all for them. If you love Michael Penix that much, you want to go that route, you got to trade back into the first round to secure him yeah. for the Patriots. If you sit back on your hands and wait, you're not going to get him. There's a big chance of that not happening. See, at the same time, though, like I like to look at the Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen relationship at the beginning. I regularly say to this day that Stephon Diggs was a key into Josh Allen's development of being able to turn into an actual credible quarterback going into it. So even if Penix isn't there, and I know you guys are thinking I'm crazy right now, but, I mean, let's look at some of the current starting quarterbacks right now that were drafted in the third or the fourth round by itself. I think if they go Marvin Harrison Jr., and if they get Rattler, not Bo Nix. And so I don't like Bo Nix. I was about to ask you, is Rattler like ahead of Bo Nix for you in your head? Uh, Yeah. Surprisingly enough. I have you just Rattler. hate yeah. every Oregon duck? And, yeah, that's surprising to me. I don't <laughs> like okay. And so yeah, I you're a hater, bro. Right you're a hater, that. bro. You're a Drake May <laughs> hater. You're a, you're a Bo, man. You're a Bo, Bo Nicks hater. hater. Yeah, dude, dude. Troy Franklin hater. Listen, man. Like Joe just based Burrow. off of everything I have seen, I'm not a <laughs> Bo Nicks. I'm not a Drake May guy. That is man. I get it. I get it. But Dan, I man, you're gambling. I think you're just le- like, come on, Dan. That's like saying like the Patriots can't afford to gamble is where my head's at. Yeah, I don't think they can bro. afford to gamble like that. Yeah, I you mean, can't gamble on a, Zach, on a Zach Wilson. So they have all the money in the world. I highly doubt that this coach is playing for his job this year. Okay, it's his first year as head coach, first year GM. They have Jacoby Brissett, who's going to get it done. I mean, what were their expectations at this point, right? Like to go on ahead and just win the AFC East? That is not their goal, okay? They just want to go on ahead and start building correctly. And I'm telling you guys, the best move for the Patriots, with all the cash they have in the damn bank, okay, next year they can easily grab somebody that's a free agent if whatever rookie they grab in the second and third doesn't pan out. Yeah, most definitely. And so they're not gambling, and so they're playing with house money. 
In my no. opinion, I think you go. It, you don't get it, like that's third overall. I think pick. you go Marvin Harrison Jr. I do. But you have a chance to get like the third best like quarterback in the whole draft right there. Like a, a franchise quarterback is more valuable than a top pros, prospect at wide receiver, in my opinion. Well, like, if you're especially the Patriots, you don't have a quarterback. You draft you know, the blue chip franchise quarterback face of the franchise before you worry about the weapons. You got to get the quarterback first. Josh Allen I mean, did not have weapons his first two years. It took them until year three to get him the weapons, and then he became yeah. the player that he is. So you, yeah. you, you like, there's no yeah. guarantee the Patriots have a top three pick again where they yeah. can roll the dice again. I mean, if they trade down and you have all those assets to use to be aggressive yeah. next year to trade for a quarterback, that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. But I think sticking, like, drafting Marvin Harrison Jr. when you literally don't have a future at quarterback doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, but then again... Yeah. The third best quarterback in the 2021 draft class was Trey Lance. Yeah, but that's few and be- that's few and between. <laughs> yeah, but, but mean, then but then you're saying Michael Penix. Like, how do you know he's going to be good? I mean, or Rattler. It's like that. So it's, it's even more of a crapshoot at that so, point. So here's the deal, right? Like, I look at every quarterback outside of Caleb Williams, and there's red flags about them. I look at every single receiver, and I look for red flags. There are no red flags for Marvin Harrison Jr. I'm just saying. Zero. Yeah. He's a blue chip. He's going to be an elite future Hall of Famer. I can almost guarantee you that. Marvin Harrison Jr. will be a future Hall of Famer. All these other quarterbacks, man, I think they're rolling the dice picking a quarterback at three rather than that. Now, I'll say this, Dan. I'm not opposed to getting Marvin Harrison Jr. at three for the Patriots. I am not opposed to that. I think um, that that's a move to make, too. But you got to take if, – if you like Michael Penix – yeah. If you if you like Michael Penix, and if JJ McCarthy is still there in the twenties, or yeah. Michael Penix Jr. is there in the twenties, you got to take pick number thirty four. You got to take pick sixty eight, and you got to try to move up in the in the late twenties to to secure it. You have to, and hope you don't miss. And then that would be massively successful if you like those guys and, and they're available. If you're like they're another quarterback and we're going to hope that they work out, then you go take the offensive tackle you need in the second round at 34 and, and keep it moving until until next year and let Jacoby be the bridge and maybe in the sixth yeah. round take a late guy. But don't – yeah, you don't you don't take that chance like that. unless Now, if you know you know the quarterback you like yeah, and he's there at three – then you go for it. The problem with this draft is you got guys like J.J. McCarthy and you got guys like Michael Penix where it's like, man, I like him, but I don't have to waste the number three pick on him. Yeah. But, but you do need to waste the number 22 pick, 25 pick on him. But now you're gambling on, I mean, you got like four teams out here that will move up and take them and scoop them up. Yeah, I mean, you you just drafted Mac Jones to be your franchise quarterback. You trade him, didn't work out. You yeah. brought in Jacoby Brissett. You have a brand new coach. You want yeah. to pair the head coach with a blue chip quarterback to build yeah. a team around. And you have the third overall pick, so I think it's a no brainer. Like if they don't go quarterback at three, I'd be I'd be shocked, honestly. Mm. I'd be shocked. It's Marvin Harrison Senior was drafted two years before Peyton Manning. How much do they love the quarterback that might still be there? Because it, when it's all said and yeah. done, you might also want to use next year's first round pick to get back in the early, the teens of the first round or something like that with this year's second and next year's second. It depends on how much you love them. How much yeah. do you love a guy? Yeah, I mean, you hope you're, if you're the Patriots, you're hopeful that you love three of these quarterbacks. So one of them yeah. can be there for you. Obviously, you can love Caleb Williams all you want. You're not getting them. And then you're hopeful yeah. that one of you love Drake May, one of like if they love one of JJ, May or Daniels, they're gold. And they're good. They they're there. good. And, and they think that one of those guys could be the face of their team. You draft them. You let them sit behind Brissett for a year. And then next year, you get aggressive in the first round. You get a receiver. And then that's when he first starts. I think that's that should be the Patriots. Like, you don't have a third overall pick every year. Like, it's rare to have that type of talent, especially with a, a draft that has this much quarterback talent at the top end of the draft. They have an opportunity to get their franchise quarterback early in the draft. 
I think that's what they're going to be doing. But, hey, they're open for business, too. Like they said, that could be smokescreen, though. You never know. They open for damn business. Speaking of the Patriots, okay, this is actually a topic that TD wanted to do yesterday. So I'm actually going to let you uh, lead this, okay? It's the Bill Belichick update because oh. you wanted to discuss that specific topic. I just wanted to throw that in there because we weren't able to get to it yesterday. Talk to me about Bill. I have some interesting stuff coming out of New England, some scandalous stuff. We don't know, you know, there's been back and forth of what's true and what's not true. But reports, too, directly to ESPN, um, someone close to the Patriots situation um, has been linked to basically kind of giving an inside scoop on Robert Kraft and um, Bill Belichick's relationship. Um, It is rumored, um, at least right now, even though a credible source has come to ESPN and basically said that Robert Kraft took it upon himself to even reach out to the Atlanta Falcons to um, not give an endorsement to Bill Belichick getting the job um, in Atlanta. Um, There's been reports that Bill Belichick basically has said, uh, um, not Bill Belichick, but Robert Kraft said, that's not true. I actually gave him a recommendation and all type of things of that nature. Um, So um, there's conflicting stories, but this is a direct um, quote from someone close to the situation in New England. Um, and, and it made me wonder, what is Bill Belichick's future right now? Because he was trying to get a head coaching job. He couldn't get one. And now some people are saying he's sitting back. He's going to do some analyst work um, during the draft. And he's sitting back waiting for next year to potentially get a head coaching job in the NFC East with three team potential um, teams. Um, Cowboys being one, you know, and two others. I forgot which ones they were. Um, But, yeah, what do you think his future is in the NFL? Is he even going to be given an opportunity to try to break Don Shula's record? Like, what's going to happen? Because that's all he wants to do. Let's be honest. He's just trying to get two, three more years so he could break the record. You know, I think he's like 20 behind or something like that. Um, so he's trying to get about two to three more seasons to try to be the most winning coach in NFL history. What's your thoughts on that, Richie, and his future? Yeah, I mean, he's going to be next to Pat McAfee on his show for the draft. Yeah. So we're going to see his kind of debut of being a media guy. Hey, what if he falls in love with that so much and he never thought I'd see him in the media? But what, what no. if that's his future? What if he's he got to uh, get that record, though, don't he? Legacy. I mean, what if – what? what Obviously, a team didn't want him this cycle. What what makes you think a team's gonna want him next year's cycle? I mm. mean, he's he's known as the goat, yes, but like, is his time kind of over? Bro, the NFL is adjusting. The NFL is evolving into a modern day league. I think he's done, man. He's old, and it's tough. Now, I also think there's a part of Bill Belichick that not only does he want to get the record, but he saw Tom Brady go to another team and win a Super Bowl. I think he'd probably want to go to another team and prove that he can win a Super Bowl without Tom Brady. Good point. Because now since Tom Brady did it, now everyone's like, yeah, it was Tom Brady the whole time. Belichick doesn't deserve the credit. It's all Brady. Because Brady was able to go to a franchise and win a Super Bowl with them right away without him, which is still mind-blowing, by the way. Um, So it's going to be interesting to see how he operates as a media guy. and. Honestly, I don't know what team would be interested to bring in that guy to kind of be the because he's used to being the head of personnel, not just head coach. I don't think there's a team that's going to want to give him the control that he had in Foxborough. And I don't think Belichick is going to want to go somewhere without that control. Well, it was reported as well that Bill Belichick in his interviews was very adamant that he is willing to step back from control when he just wants to coach. Um, He is willing to not have all the controls of everything. He just wants to coach. And I just looked it up. The number is actually 14 wins. So he's actually closer than 20. So I think that he's really going to try to come back for at least two seasons and try to break the record. But 14 wins, he's willing to defer control because I think he acknowledged, you know, he had a lot of control, wanted to do so much. But he made it clear in his interview with Atlanta that he does not need control. He just wants to coach the team. And um, they still didn't go for it. I'll tell you what. um, I think there is no world where he just settles being a media person. I'm excited to see what he's like on Pat McAfee. For yeah. sure, because all we remember is just a short answers, and we're on to Cincinnati lines that would be sprayed all over the place his entire career. <laughs> I'm excited to see some personality from the guy. But um, I'll tell you what, 
I mean, let's just think about some of the head coaches that are on the hot seat this year, right? I think the Giants would make a hell of a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. I can see that's, him going to New York. That's one of the Returning to New York, but this time as a head coach. Because, I mean, I'll be honest with you, man. With the New York Giants, they are probably one of the most least patient organizations when it comes to a head coach. Since Coughlin has been out, like they've been on a damn carousel. So I can see this being Dable's last year if they don't make some noise and go into it. Um, Cowboys. Cowboys, definitely. That that would be a Jerry move. That, Jet- thousand, that would be a Jerry move. And, you, well, I mean, I feel like those two egos clashing at each other, like both of them love control, like <laughs> Bill and Jerry Jones. I feel like that they might as well just make a reality TV show out of that dynamic for sure. Um, damn. Jet- I mean, Jets. Jets, Dan. The Jets could be possible if Sala if Sala doesn't right like if the Jets have a similar Richie! season from last year. No, 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 no. Say for example that that the Jets stay like relatively healthy, but then for some Eight odd wins. reason, for some odd reason, they have a similar season as of last year. I could see Sala getting the boot, and I could see Bill Belichick definitely being somebody that they would be interested in rolling with. Bill with that defense. Come on, dude. Yeah. That defense would be completely different with Bill. It would not work. It's a completely different scheme. Think so. yeah, Players aren't uh, capable, Dan. Players aren't capable. Belichick's scheme is a completely different scheme than what Salah runs. So it wouldn't be an easy transition. Yeah. I'm trying I mean, I'm trying to think of some other potential fits. I'm like, oh, there's I'm trying- a lot. Bears, Vikings. Bears, yeah, dude. Bears could be something too, because if ever Fluss doesn't improve at least a little bit. Yeah, With all the money that front office has been putting down. I can see him going to Chicago too. The Vikings for sure. You think? Yeah, I, I mean, like the coach, but I mean, I really don't know the sentiment around fans. Remember, around oh, they they're, they're tired of it because you can't fail on your side of the ball. It's you're one right. thing when your team's failing. Like if the defense fail, that'll be fine. But you're the offensive guy. You can't fail on offense, and that's where they've been failing in Minnesota. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, yeah but for the Jets, team. for the Jets standpoint, they've only fell on offense and the defense has been excellent. Yeah, because Salah, Sala, he's a defensive guy. So that that's a good look for Salah. It's just that the expectations of the team overall, though. Yeah, and you're right, Richie. That That's a two year window over there. As long as Rodgers is there, that's a two year window for everybody, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Unless, Unless you win yeah. three, four games. That's different. Y'all, no. Yeah, like, I'll crack. say this. Rodgers is gone if Salah's gone. Like, that's a pairing. Hmm. Like, Belichick Damn. is not coming here with Rodgers still here. Like, that that, that won't work. <laughs> <laughs> Another team to consider. Talk to me. Miami. Pittsburgh. Depends on Mike Tomlin's Tomlin? season. Remember, that, you know, the, this season is a lot for him, you know? And oh, he'll my God, Justin it, Fields. He'll, he'll find a job right away, by the way. He'll find a job right away. So yeah. I'm just saying, but yeah, that's a, that's someone I take if Sala leaves is my <laughs> see, comment. I feel like Bill Belichick ended up walking away from the organization, like deep into while other organizations were already having conversations with coaches in the first mm-hmm. place. I have a feeling he'll have a job. And if Buffalo missed the playoffs this year, they could scrap it. Uh, you know, to be completely honest with you, man, like as much as I would be open minded to that, as much as I would be open minded to that, um, based off of like what I've been hearing, he probably he probably has a job for the, uh, bro, bro, for the you considerable win. time in the future. I'm not you saying that I wouldn't games. be open to it. It's so I'm not saying that I wouldn't games. be open to it, but like from from what I've been hearing in house, um I think we're pretty much married to this guy. Like, not unless he goes out and, like, lays an egg and gets, like, five wins next year. Like, I think McDermott's about as safe as humanly possible. Well, that's highly likely. I know some Bills fans are super polarized about that, but, I mean, I'm just, you know. Mike McDaniel? Huh? Mike McDaniel? Uh, No, because they're going to give two of the money this offseason. Yeah, they are. He's got an excuse. Go. Yeah, you're going to be so excited for him to get paid. I really am. Good for him, man. He deserves it. Yeah, when Tua gets paid, everybody just bought themselves 
two more years minimum th- and a solid three. Solid so, three. So when Don and Irene two, said one, two, one, that he could two. coach Arizona, Chicago, Minnesota, New York Jets, New York Giants, or Vegas. Oakland. Well, Vegas, yeah. Lost. Mm. Interesting team. Yeah, rest yeah. in peace to the Oakland Raiders, dude. Yeah. Damn Raiders. Oakland. Losing all of their sports teams over there, baby. Losing all of their sports teams. <laughs> yeah, Oakland's insane. done. Absolutely done. All right, moving on. So you know what? What the heck did Watson say about Tua? I still have no idea what that's about. That's coming. Don't Sorry. <laughs> Jumping the gun here. <laughs> all right. So we were discussing the Patriots potentially moving down, the Cardinals potentially moving down. And there's typically two teams that are in the conversation of a team that might want to move up so they can get a quarterback. Uh, One is the Denver Broncos, and then the other is the Minnesota Vikings. So I want to ask you guys this question. Out of those two teams, what team do you feel like is in more desperate need to get one of those potential top three or top four guys? The Vikings or the Broncos? TD. The Minnesota Vikings, and by far. Denver Broncos, they stripped the whole roster. They can go get their quarterback, but they're not going anywhere anytime soon. They don't even have the infrastructure around the quarterback yet. The Minnesota Vikings still have a team that's trying to compete. They still have a receiver, one of the best wide receivers in the entire NFL, who they're literally trying to appease with a good quarterback. Um, And on top of it, the defense has been playing way better than the offense as of late, um, with or without Kirk Cousins. So they don't have Kirk Cousins anymore. They got to get the quarterback situation straight because they got some weapons on offense, and they're trying to actually try to compete in that division and make a playoff push. They haven't completely stripped the roster. They're not in this massive rebuild. They're in a hybrid rebuild where get the quarterback, add a few pieces, and let's go to war. And they have some picks, and they're more in a compete mode now. So they're desperate because if they don't get the quarterback, and you have a failing season, the coach and the general manager, the, the, the head coach and general manager might be out the door. Mm-hmm. Denver, who has expectations for Denver? I don't care if they got Caleb. Who got expectations for them next year? <laughs> you know? Nobody's like, and, and, and you see what they did with the coach and things like that. They're straight over there. They're not tripping. They're not expecting to make the playoffs next year. The Vikings are expected to compete with their young quarterback. Maybe not like C.J. Stroud, but you got to compete when you got Justin Jefferson and company, when you got an up-and-coming defense and the money that you put into it and the talent you brought in. They're trying to make something happen now and compete. So I got the Vikings all day because jobs are on the line, immediate jobs are on the line, and Denver – Nobody got no expectations over there right now. Go get a move up. Go get a quarterback. And if you land the one you want, good. Now you still got to build around it. Mm. Richie, what team is more desperate for a quarterback? Denver, easily. I mean, 100%. You look at their quarterback room, there's literally not one person on there that you can even pencil in as a starter. At least the Vikings have someone you can pencil in. As a starter, not saying he's their guy, but hey, I'm not saying Sam's going to be their franchise quarterback, but the Vikings actually have a quarterback on their roster that was a top pick and they actually could potentially start and try to do something with the Broncos have literally not even an NFL caliber talent on their roster. The Denver Broncos are the more desperate team. They don't have anything. They need to get their quarterback. They don't have a Sean Payton goes to that team and it's all an absolute crapshoot. Sean Payton needs his quarterback to build with. I don't care what team is more built to win now or not. You look at the roster, you look at the quarterback room, and you look at the coaching staff, and you look at everything around it. The Denver Broncos as an organization have been desperate for their franchise quarterback for years. For years. The Minnesota Vikings just got rid of their franchise QB, the face of their team, and Kirk Cousins. It's fresh. They're not that desperate. The Broncos have been desperate forever. So they're easily, right when you asked that question, it was Broncos 110%. They've been looking for their franchise quarterback since Peyton Manning retired. It's been a long time for Denver. They've been the more more desperate team for years, and they are the most desperate team, I think, in this entire draft. 
But unfortunately for them, they don't have a top pick. And you look at that team, bro, the only thing that that will sell some hope into that organization and the fan base is trading up for a blue chip quarterback that will give them some, you know, hope like, oh, let's come on. Let's go into the season with a rookie QB. Let's let him learn on the fly and we'll build around him for these next few years. Like that's what the Broncos need. And when you asked that question, it was easy for me. Broncos all day. See, I feel like both of you make wonderful points, right? Because I'm pretty sure the QB1 on the Denver Broncos roster right now is Trevor Simeon, right? That is certainly, certainly a thing. And, I mean, we all know, and so that Richie still sleeps in a Sam Darnold New York Jets jersey. Yeah, every single he day. We know that he loves the guy, all right? However, I also like TD's take about it's not even necessarily that they need to fill the void for the quarterback. I'm going to revert this back to the conversation we had a couple of days ago. You also have an incredible wide receiver by the name of Justin Jefferson. Do you really think that he wants to stay on a team with Sam Darnold as their quarterback? I feel like when it comes down into a receiver like that, he's going to have quite a bit of say, or at least he's going to want a particular somebody to be throwing him the ball because Say it again. Dude doesn't want to be another Calvin Johnson. He wants to find somebody. So I can see arguments both ways. I think that if the Vikings don't walk away with a top three, top four guy, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Jefferson and his agent just stop doing negotiations because he wants to hit free agency. He wants to go elsewhere, somewhere where he could actually make an impact on the game. That might be a little sneaky take there as well. Well, let me let me let me let me just add on to my um stance real quick to try to <laughs> sell it a little more. The reason why I'm going Vikings is because the Broncos don't even have hope to have desperation. And what I mean by that is, say we're both, uh, say me and Richie's in the desert, right? And I'm the Minnesota <laughs> Viking. I'm the Minnesota Vikings, and ten miles away is a big lake, and we're just we're just so oh, desperate. We want water. But for Richie, it's 2,000 miles away, okay? For Richie, it's 2,000 miles away. He ain't never going to get there before, before his life is over. The, 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 the Broncos don't even have draft picks to be desperate to move up. They don't even, they're like, all oh, hope is gone. They don't even have nothing to utilize their hope and desperation. So there's no desperation. They're just like, we ain't got nothing. Screw desperation. That's just going to hurt us even more. Let's just sit here and... Be bored. We ain't got no desperation. Whatever happens, happens. We'll see you next year, and then we'll show our desperation because we might have a few more assets. But the Vikings got a little ammunition in there, more drive. They're more likely to go up to number three than Denver is because of the assets. Hopefully that but makes sense. It, it, but if that's the – bro, like if you're a Broncos fan and that's your mindset that you are in a desperation mode, you can't even be desperate, bro, that's sad. Well, yeah, it is, and they put themselves in that situation, right, Richie? Because they did. It, it, and they Bum gave away Sean all Payton. of those picks. <laughs> it's crazy. They they gave themselves no hope, and they put themselves in a situation where they're not even allowed to be desperate because desperation means that you have the ability to do something crazy and stupid just to get what you want. They don't even have nothing to do. They don't have nothing they can do crazy or stupid because they gave it all up. They don't even have anything where they could be desperate. So it is what it is. Minnesota Vikings, they at least they're in the desperation game where they can put a whole bunch of picks together to move up in a, a desperate manner. So sorry, Denver Bronco fans. Y'all got at least a year or two before you even feel good about having hope. Mm. Well, Ouch. I'll tell you what, man. We will smell the sweet stench of desperation here in just about seven days. Now the topic all of you are here for. Deshaun Watson, all right? <laughs> and honestly, I kind of wanted to talk about like what you guys ended up foreseeing about him. But I saw a podcast clip, and of course he is being pressed about the potential of him regressing, not looking like the same player. And he starts going off by building a narrative saying, well, you have to understand that you see my game slightly improve from game to game as it goes into it. He did mention the game that he ended up getting injured. I want to say it was against the Cincinnati Bengals where he was absolutely going off. He said, I haven't had a full, full season to really get going. I was off for a year. 
And you'll notice my game takes some time to get cooking, but once it starts cooking, it cooks. Like, unlike a Tua situation. It was very subtle. It was very subtle. He was essentially suggesting that Tua starts off hot and then regresses. And he was saying, yeah, like, I'm not like Tua. He goes, it takes time for me to get cooking, but once I get warmed up, I'm still the same player. So I'll start off with TD about his thoughts about that side statement. I've been trying to find the clip. I saw it yesterday. Somebody in the Dolphins community ended up sharing it. Uh, but I do want to ask y'all's thoughts on Watson. He's still 29. He's 28, 29 years old. He's still young. Um, do you believe that? And do I'm you curious to hear TD that he can because still be he one loves of the Deshaun Watson. And so do you think he still could be one of the top tier quarterbacks in this league? And the only thing robbing him of the fact is, is that he hasn't had enough of a season to continue. Because you look at the numbers during his progression. Yeah, he started off slow, but like you would see, like you started seeing him improve, 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 and get going and really get something under his belt. So, of course, we'll let TD discuss that shot. Uh, right at Tua, and then also we will sort of uh, scan his brain to think or to ask the question, does Deshaun Watson have a prayer of ever being the Houston Texans version of himself? Okay, go ahead. Uh, I think he does, but he's going to have to start, um, you know, um, staying healthy. I think he is a rhythm guy, a guy who gets in the flow once he's healthy and he gets, you know, a full season under his belt that that cooking can start. We know he's had the potential. You can't sleep on the fact that guys have potential. If they've done it before and they're not, you know, um, old and it's wearing off, then you've seen them do it. They just have to get back to form. You know, what's the difference between him then and now? What has changed? What physically has changed? What's mentally has changed? Are those things recuperable? So I think he can get right back to being the Houston Texans version of himself. And to be quite honest with you, maybe he could even be better because it's not like we ever got to see him go into his prime. We just saw him balling out early in his career and then drama just hit the mouth. And he's been trying to work his way back ever since. Let's not forget, didn't the man miss like a year and a half, two years of football at this point? Mm -hmm. You know, um, so that's all a factor as well. So I think he can cook. But let me go back to his two comments. I remember the podcast in the episode that he said it. OK, um, this may make it sound even worse for Tua. Um but this is what he also said. He was basically saying that um, he's not like a Tua because another aspect that he mentioned in his game versus Tua is the fact that defenses can play Tua one way. You know, they could clog That's the insane. middle. Yeah, they could clog the middle. They could force him to, you know, do things that he's not used to. He could, they, you know, once they figure that out, uh, I mean, it's tough. But when I get going and I get cooking, you could clog the middle. I'm going to get you outside. You could get outside and the middle. Now you got to exactly. worry about me running. Now you worry about me running, I'm going to carve you up. See, that's the difference between a guy like me and a tool. A tool is really good at what he does, but you can game plan for that. Guys like me, you can't game plan for. I, I can make you pay in all type of ways. So... And then I'm going to be honest with you. That's the sad freaking truth. That's the <laughs> difference. No, let's call it what it is. That's the difference between these quarterbacks out here. Let me make another bold statement. If Deshaun Watson gets back to his Houston stuff and he grows on that, it's hard to actually say he's not one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL right there with Mahomes from his capabilities. Everybody knows pre-issue Deshaun Watson, he could process the field, he could read. He's one of the few quarterbacks that could actually process and read defenses. Pre-snap, post-snap. Like, he's one of the few. That's what we saw in his prime. We saw him take out Josh Allen in the playoffs when he was young. We saw we saw him compete at some of the highest levels against Kansas City, that five-touchdown game, 400, 500 yards or whatever he put up. We saw this stuff. We know he got wheels with his legs like Deshaun, I mean, like um, Lamar Jackson. Now he's kind of a little like the current Lamar Jackson. He can still run, but he ain't doing it as much like Lamar used to do. Lamar ain't the same either. People don't realize that. But um, 
He has whatever – this quarterback got their strength. This quarterback got their strength. That quarterback, he has all of those things. When you really look at Deshaun Watson when he was playing his best football, I'd be pressed for somebody to tell me what was his flaw. What was the flaw? I mean, the kid, the kid was deadly, but he was just young. And on top of it, Houston had it's the deep. You had defensive players coming out apologizing to him in the public, saying we failed him, we failed him. I'm sorry, Deshaun Watson. We have failed you. Watt came out and said that we failed him. He, we are wasting his time uh, because our defense failed the offense. So Deshaun Watson is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL if he could ever get back. But again, the question is, can he get back? We don't know. We don't know how much of an impact of having that time off has affected him. He has to prove that. And if he can't prove it, then he's just going to dwindle down as a player, continue to, and nobody's going to really, you know, but lucky him, he got that fully guaranteed contract where he at least got two more years. Even if they don't like him, they got to hold him for at least two more years based off of that contract. So he's going to be given the ample amount of time to Get back to form. That's why I always told people, if I traded for Deshaun Watson, I don't care about the first year he comes back. I might not even care about the second year. I know that I got my franchise guy for the future, and hopefully he gets back to form and we're competing with anybody. That's my take on it. Damn. Richie, talk to me, man. That was obviously a very passionate response. Yeah, I mean, our wow. our good friend TD Finstock. Talk. talk to us. Dude, Deshaun Watson. Wow. If you're a, if you're a Dolphins fan that wants and defends and believes in Tua, and you hear that, what are you saying in defense of that? <laughs> and nothing you said was wrong. What, what was the wrong no, thing when when, when Deshaun was Watson was on that podcast saying you can you can't do that to me? And we've proved you've seen it, Richie, in the last I, in no, December and January. No, I'm I'm agreeing with. I'm just saying if you're a Dolphins fan and you're Believer in Tua, and I see them everywhere on Twitter, like that we should pay him. He is our guy, and you hear that a franchise quarterback like Deshaun Watson says, I'm not Tua, where you shut down Tua, what he does good in, which he does very, very well. If you shut that down, he can't beat you anywhere else. Bro, it's just literally exactly what I've been telling everybody about Tua for so long. Like, all these people look at Box scores with this quarterback. I saw someone in the chat. Two is the goat. He's led the league in passing yards. Oh, congrats. Like, wh who cares? Like, this guy's running up the score on all these terrible defenses because he gets a good timing ball out. And Tyreek runs for 70-plus yards. And then you shut that down. The good team's game plan against Tua at a high level, which is why Tua's never been able to step up in a big moment against a good team in the playoffs in December. There is a reason for this. And Deshaun Watson hit it right in the nail, and he's right. He's not that quarterback. We all know that. His time in Houston was – he was one of the best quarterbacks in the whole league. So, like, if you're a Dolphins fan, how can you justify it? It's literally truth. If you're just basing it off of PFF grades and you're basing it off of box scores and you're basing it off of accuracy, like TD likes to claim, TD's so accurate. Yeah, accuracy. He's so good. Better than Rodgers. Better than Josh Allen. I can't hold on to my few arguments. Like, come on, man. Like, two is not better than Rodgers and Josh Allen in division. I'll, I'll go – I'll freaking print that back right now, bro. Give me Josh Allen over to any day. Give me Thanks. a 40-year-old – Aaron Rodgers off an Achilles over Tua. <laughs> I don't want a one-dimensional quarterback that's so good at something that's so easy to be taken away. You want that guy to be your quarterback? Yeah, he's so good at it, but it's something that you can game plan against and shut down with ease. That's why I'm never afraid of him. I'm not. Oh, well, Tua's never lost to the Jets. Congratulations. You never... Went up against this team when we're fully loaded and healthy. I get it. Two has got the better of the Jets. Okay, we've sucked for so long. I understand that. But when you look at what Deshaun Watson said, bro, he had nothing but just truth behind that, bro. Like, Deshaun Watson <laughs> has the playmaking ability of to elevate the guys around him. Now, will he ever get back to that? We do not know. And that's the, that's the thing I'm hopeful that he doesn't do, right? Because oh, we I don't all want hopefully he don't. <laughs> Yeah, the yeah. Browns would be good in that in that, in that state, right? So that's another elite, uh, you know. Josh Allen, Josh Allen's the other kryptonite. Dude, I, dude, I'll I, tell you what, man. And so if Deshaun Watson gets back to, like, 
form like Houston Texans form, dude, like that team's a Super Bowl contender. I would huh. take – all right, dude, listen, man. Like I would take a prime Deshaun Watson and the Browns, like say that he gets back. I'd take that team better than the Houston Texans. Yeah, I mean, you got to look at what the Browns did with the quarterback trouble they had last year. That's what I'm saying. If Deshaun Watson was playing for the Browns during the playoffs, I'm almost willing to bet that they would have beat the Texans. P- people don't Wait. realize he only played six games last year, and he was still five and one. Yeah, <laughs> he was still five and yeah, one. Yeah, but with then that the team. Browns He's without struggling. him were winning without him too. Like the Browns. Yeah, but that, but crap. that's the point. That's the point of the team. They were he was struggling, and they were winning. And they were winning when he was gone. So imagine if he was actually playing at a high level. Man, that that team there, it'd be ridiculous. Damn. Well, folks. At least he was getting paid. Hey, folks, thank you so much for tuning in to yet another edition of The Huddle. Man, we love it. We're live Monday through Friday at 3 p.m. EST. And we're giving you all the late breaking NFL news, rumors, and outlandish takes. So subscribe if you haven't already and smash that like button. 101 likes. Look at that. I love you guys. Thank you so much. I didn't even need to bully you at, at all. Like, I mean, you guys just already know. Richie, any final words to the squad before we set them up? Nah, man. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another edition of The Huddle. We got another episode tomorrow, then we're off for the weekend as usual. And then it's NFL Draft Week, baby. NFL Draft Week. We're really excited about it. Sorry if I offended any two and ears in the chat, but hey, you got it. The truth hurts sometimes. We shall see business. what happens. We're coming the for name you, of the Rick. business, baby. That's the name of the business. I, I still think TD is a two and ear, even though he won't admit it. But he is. I'm not a two and ear because I put the Dolphins above any player, the team. But um, um, I like to. I just always hope that he can be our guy. But I just get discouraged sometimes. So then I tell the truth. Best quarterback in the division. That's right, Super Bowl. Anyway, listen, man. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. To the huddle right here on Bet US TV, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Um, another episode in the books. Make sure you follow us at Bet US TV so you can get the daily schedule of all the shows on Bet US TV. And the huddle, episode 45, is in the books. Y'all got to come to 46 tomorrow. It's going down. Damn it. Tell you what, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. Subscribe, smash that like button, and we'll see you tomorrow. Peace. Peace. Look at this guy. The show. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, folks, and subscribe to the channel. If you hit that notification bell, you'll get notified every single time we go live or make a video here on BetUS TV. Also, do not forget to check out more sports content over at BetUSTV.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. Can't wait to see you guys again soon.